answering your questions about uh, this document, <clears throat> which is going to be central to next week's uh, Down the Hill, and is a good way to actually, if you haven't uh, secured meetings, kind of reach out to those offices where you're still looking and say, this is the document we're going to be talking about, these concrete proposals, um, and we're looking forward to talking with you about, about passenger rail funding in FY 2021. Okay, so this is the document we are going to be covering. And Joe, are we recording? Okay, thank you. This is the document we're going to be covering. Um, it should be familiar to you. Um, this is what we have every year as so a one pager uh, when we have had our physical day on the hills, which I'm missing uh, desperately right now because virtual days on the hill are new to me and it's been a kind of a struggle <laughs> to figure it out. So um, again, if if you don't have it in front of you, I send it out via email uh, and you want to dig deeper into it. Um, the link is there in your inbox and um, you can also find it at railpassengers.org backslash blueprints. We'll also, you know, cover the picture, the big picture kind of 20,000 foot context in which this ask is being addressed uh, to congressional offices. I'm sure as we follow along, a lot of you are going to be asking questions to yourself like, why are we going about regular order when we know that uh, the response to the coronavirus, uh, response to the looming recession is going to dominate congressional attention. And you're right, um, this is a puzzle we're kind of trying to figure together on the run. Um, and so we will kind of address that bigger context. That means talking about um, the aid packages that are going to dominate uh, the rest of the legislative calendar, uh, talking about the more, once we move beyond the triage, which is what we're focused on right now, phase one, two, and the phase three response that's currently being negotiated um, between the Senate and the House. We're going to start thinking about, okay, let's talk about economic stimulus, something like the Recovery Act, which was very uh, beneficial to passenger rail, even though it didn't have a long tail. Uh, we're going we're gonna to look at Amtrak's $50 billion project list that they have built up over decades of uninvestment and how we can message that as a job creating bill uh, that delivers value. We will talk about what our expectations are for, for the FY 2021 appropriations bill coming out of the House and the Senate uh, and what we expect from committee action. <clears throat> Finally, we will talk about surface transportation reauthorization. How it's probably done for the year, but also how uh, offices specifically TNI and Senate Commerce, trying to uh, message that as a uh, infrastructure bill that could put a lot of Americans to work and what the opportunities are there. Um, so beginning with the 2020 funding request table, the, the most you know nuts and bolts, uh, kind of beating heart of the ask, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we, we ask for a significant increase in funding. Um, at the Amtrak level, the national network, the Northeast Corridor, uh, which you can see there, are just incremental uh, improvements over what we saw in FY 2020. Uh, they match what Amtrak outlined in their own ledge grant uh, request. I'm going to draw your attention to the, um, yeah, let's get that highlighter, Amtrak Corridor Development Program. So. That is a new program Amtrak has created. It uh, allows them to um, take federal money, go to states, um, cover the capital costs of launching a new frequency, a new corridor, um, and uh, cover the first, or at least assist with the first five years of operating costs, which is uh, one of the big obstacles in overcoming uh, launching new services. Um, because obviously once you get that service up and running, people get used to it and they're willing to pay. Um, until then, not so much. Uh, so it's a five-year program where they start out with 100% of operating on year one and they scale down to 20% by year five. Um, the downside of this program, the upside is it's quicker and it's more efficient than anything the DOT is gonna be able to do, especially the Chow DOT. 
Uh, the downside is it's, I'm not sure we were happy with the oversight um, component as currently constructed. It's a little bit um, ambiguous at that this point, but I'm sure a lot of us have suspicions about uh, the wisdom of Amtrak management um, as currently constituted. And um, we wanna see a little bit more congressional oversight in terms of where that money is spent. So those are the, uh, the trade-offs. In terms of Chrissy, um, that's again an in incremental uh, increase. This kind of reflects the fact that we're unhappy with the way the DOT has been administering the program. They've directed the, the vast majority of the funds to short line railroads, non-passenger projects. You know, I was part of the conversations in, in drafting Chrissy um, in the FAST Act, and I know that's not what authorizers intended. Um, so we're kind of keeping keeping a, a leash on that. We'll talk about ways that we've increased oversight later um, in the next slide. Federal state partnership for state of good repair. Uh, that's a dramatic increase, but that is actually in line with what we saw in FY 2018 um, when uh, Chairman Bradlinghausen was still in the House and still chair of TNI. and uh, I'm sorry, of House Appropriations. Um, the needs there, Again, it's something that can be quickly administered and it is very much targeted to passenger rail. Um, and so we think it's a good program. And we're hearing from the Hill that this is something that is gonna be uh, looked on favorably by um, at least House appropriators, but also perhaps the Senate side as well. Uh, finally, restoration enhancement grants. Uh, that's a dramatic increase from 2 million in FY 2020 to uh, 50 million in FY 2021. Um, that's really kind of us recognizing that this program has been underutilized. Um, so far, the only real funding has gone towards Gulf Coast restoration. Um, Amtrak's argument is that, you know, we're not really, they're not seeing a lot of state customers for this program. Um, I think we're going to counter with the fact that of course, you're not seeing a lot of customers because the liquidity of you know two million a year um, for a program is going to be such that it's not going to incentivize them finding the local match. Once we increase that number, we're going to start seeing more states um, think about uh, bringing back service, enhancing um, existing long distance corridors, uh, etc. Moving on. Sorry, pointer. And I'll erase all drawings. So next slide. Um, we are looking at some guidelines for this funding. Uh, the first one is, is kind of a marker for the fact that we understand there's gonna be a lot of chaos over the next few days, next few weeks, uh, actually even next few months, let's be honest. Um, and we understand that we're not gonna be able to have a um, crystal ball where we can see what happens, um, what phase four looks like in terms of a response package coming out of the House and the Senate. And so we're going to ask you folks to um, to really kind of emphasize to the offices you talk to that we are keeping a running tally um, of up-to-date uh, requests for uh, the coronavirus response. It's certainly going to be, um, I, I'm afraid, given the news coming out of transit agencies and Amtrak, um, it's probably going to be uh, a moving target in a way that we're not happy with. Um, I think revenue is about to take a really severe hit um, across the transportation sector. And if we want to make sure these services come back when we're all able to travel again, uh, it's going to need some federal assistance. So um, that's the national network, that's Northeast Quarter, and it's also state supported because a lot of state supported uh, revenue comes from sales taxes and those are going to take a hit as well uh, when people can't buy anything. So, you know, railpassengers.org backslash COVID-19 please direct staffers to that resource and say, um, our Rail Passengers Association staff is gonna keep that up to date. And if you ever wonder where things are at, 
go there. It's going to have a list of projects um, that we can quickly move on uh, as we start thinking about stimulus. Um, and we'll, we will try to keep that up to date. Uh, advanced appropriations, this is something we included in the last year's ask, so I'm not going to really touch on it. It's just about providing stability. Doesn't score any differently at the CBO level. Um, so it's it's really just about thinking ahead, not about increasing money. Uh, finally, strengthening Chrissy. Uh, again, as I mentioned, as the Chow DOT is administering this, um, this is mostly turned into a short line freight railroad program. That's not how it was intended. So we just simply asked them to um, require the DOT to consider benefits to passenger rails in determining project selection, which would open up a huge pool of money um, for passenger projects without actually affecting any of the top line budget implications. Um, transit. Uh, again, this is pretty straight ahead. This all matches more or less what we um, requested last year, but we've just plussed it up a little bit. Um, this is formula grants that come out of the um, surface transportation gas tax. Uh, we have capital investment grants. That's new starts for um, heavy rail projects. Also small starts for rural projects. Um, and then build grants, of course. Uh, Choice on Moving on, equipment. This is something that um, I, I do want to take a little time on because um, we revised it as of what, when I last sent it out a week ago. Um, the good, um, which is if you're looking at the webinar, you can see I've broken the paragraph up into two. And the first part is we want to pat Amtrak on the back for moving ahead with um, procurement process, not only for uh, the the new Acellas, next gen Acellas, but also uh, replacing Amfleet One cars for um, state supported services and corridor. Um, also, uh, new locomotives um, for the national network. Uh, but we also do make it very clear that the we are still a long ways. Um, away from where we need to be, and that uh, for fleet modernization, we dramatically scale up investment, uh, and specifically for the national network and state supported services at West. Amtrak asked us not to include the specific uh, FY 2021 figures um, as in this ask, but rather to direct um, uh, appropriators towards their. Uh, long-term plan because they don't want appropriators thinking that I think it's around 750 million uh, in FY 2021 um, that they plan to spend uh, if they are given their full uh, legislative grant request on equipment and around 530 of that is for national network the rest is northeast corridor the the real cost is much higher we all know that and so there's about two hundred two billion in un, um, unsourced federal funding that needs to be found. And their feeling is, okay, now is the perfect time to ask because manufacturing is taking a huge hit right now. And there's going to be a lot of uh, senators who are worried about the supply chain, worried about Siemens, um, CAF. Maybe less calf actually because they've been pretty incompetent but but certainly the supply chain that is coming out of the single level procurements and we have a really decent chance of of getting a significant plus up um to kind of bolster american manufacturing by america domestic all that kind of good stuff um i also made sure to reference Flexible deployment capabilities. This is in reference to a um, uh, input from Steve Mewson, who is worried about the ability Amtrak has to integrate um, some of their new equipment orders um, with their existing fleet if they just do fixed train set procurement um, requests. Next slide, we're going to talk about legislative proposals um, supported. I'm actually not going to talk about this because, as you've seen in the calendar, um, or hopefully 
as you've noted in the calendar, later this week, I'm gonna send a full written brief of all these bills. Um, a lot of these we had a personal hand in developing. Um, some of them have been, we've worked directly with the committee, so we expect them to come out in the draft um, surface transportation reauthorization. Others uh, we work with individual offices on. It's kind of at this point a little academic because um, we expected the surface transportation reauthorization draft to come out sometime early April. I don't think that's going to happen now. I don't think the TNI committee will meet again this year before the election. Uh, um, again, that's unless things change, both because <clears throat> everyone's kind of scared of being in the same room together, but also because there's kind of more pressing issues in terms of using infrastructure to prevent a extended recession. And then finally, um, Chairman Lipinski of the rail um, subcommittee on TNI was defeated in uh, a primary, I think a week ago, um, by a progressive challenger uh, out in um, Chicagoland, Cook County. Um, so, you know, he took a couple of swipes at the Democratic, um, his fellow Democrats on the way out. I don't know that they have a lot of love for him right now. And um, I, I suspect that might, his lame duck might further um, kind of cook this goose. Moving on to the next bill, or sorry, the next slide. Sorry, I'm taking a drink. The big picture. Um, let's think about the context this is all taking place in. Um, because you're going to need to know that when you talk to your uh, representatives, your senators, or their transportation staffers, whoever you're meeting with, um, and they're going to tell you some things, and I want you to know uh, and be on the same page. First thing is coronavirus A, it's going to dominate the rest of the year. There wasn't that much time anyway left on the legislative calendar with the uh, general election happening, and now um, there's there's barely anything. And so transportation staffers, they're going to be thinking uh, their capacity is going to be very narrow for your issue. So you've got to come in ready to talk about what's important to them. And that's going to be helping their constituents, uh, people who live in their states um, over the next few months, which are going to be very critical. We're going to see a lot of people out of business. We're going to see a lot of businesses teetering. Um, and and so but you know there's there's an opportunity there because infrastructure is a great way to get people back to work um so two points on that first one is thank you messages will be very important and i'm i'm saying this with fingers crossed because as we speak i'm hearing that uh the house house dems and senate gop are very close on a compromise for the phase three coronavirus aid package um and and so we will have some to thank them for uh both versions give amtrak 1 billion it's about 550 for the national network and state supported and then the rest goes to the northeast corridor i think i have that right i, I might double check that um then the transit one uh, the transit aid is is um there's more of a difference uh, between the house and senate version house version has 20 5 billion and it's uh geared more towards urban transit systems uh whereas the senate version is 20 billion and 16 billion go towards urban transit systems with the 4 billion set aside for rural systems uh, both good numbers and so i think we ought to give ourselves a pat on the back for doing our job making sure our issue was taken care of um we had both that you know it was bipartisan, it was bicameral, and we got where we need to be. So I, I'm very hopeful that we will have a, a big thank you to give to every every member of Congress that we meet with um, next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other message we need to be bringing is transportation, transportation relation industries 
um, related industries employ about 13 million Americans. And um, that's not even getting into the construction trades. So if we're looking at supporting jobs across the US, um, making sure that Amtrak, passenger rail operators like Brightline and transit operators across the US continue to run, that's gonna be a huge part of the picture. Um, that brings me to the next point, which is uh, as soon as we get out of phase three, I think we're gonna start thinking about shifting towards uh, a longer tail economic stimulus uh, legislation. Um, so right now, members of Congress are focusing on triage, um, but they're gonna start thinking about, okay, how do we, well, first things first is they're gonna start looking at how much the deficit has gone up and that everyone's gonna get a little scared and money's gonna get a little harder to, um, to move. Second thing is, um, I think they're gonna wanna start pacing out a lot of this um, recovery act money I can't call it the Recovery Act yet, but they're going to start wanting to pace out this uh, recovery money uh, a little bit more deliberately, uh, deliberately, a little bit more um, consideration and care is going to go into it. And again, that's something that benefits uh, infrastructure because you can have some big projects where you know um, if you appropriate that money, it's going to be just by the nature of construction. Um, kind of a steady drip, keeping people employed. Um, we have construction season coming up. We weren't, we're gonna wanna take advantage of it. Um, and so again, this brings me to my final point on this slide, start thinking about projects in your state. Um, Amtrak uh, in, in table eight of their legislative grant request has $50 billion in projects they've outlined all across the country, it's equipment, it's stations, it's national network, state supported Northeast corridor. Familiarize yourself with that list. Um, it can be fun, it can all be initiated very quickly. I, I've gotten a kind of a, a very, I included the whole table here, it's gonna be hard for you to see, um, but again, it's, it's table eight. I linked to it um, in the legislative grant request um, that you all have in front of you. And, and this is something you should supplement with, if you have a state supported, uh, I'm sorry, a state rail plan um, with projects outlines, you wanna be able to talk about that when you meet with your, with, your, uh, with your representatives. You wanna be able to, if there's any, especially if there's any projects, whether it's inner city rail or transit, um, where the environmental work is done, Come in ready because I think there's going to be a lot of money um, that is going to uh, come in very lumpy sums. It's going to come very quick and we're not going to know. And you just want to be able to be a resource uh, because every congressional office is going to want to make sure that their constituents are part of um, any sort of recovery act. Uh, moving more towards regular order, check how much time I have. Yeah, I've been about half an hour, so I think I, we're good for questions, but regular order, FY 2021 on appropriations. Um, I expect it to pass out of committee. Um, that's what I heard last week from the appropriations staffers in both the House side and the Senate side. However, those seven days have contained uh, about a year's worth of events, so um, I'm not sure, but I think we got to be ready, and that's why you will want to include um, that kind of FY 2021 holistic picture uh, to your transportation staff. First, let them know you're ready to talk about it and that we have our proposals. It's gonna be below coronavirus, but it's still gonna be, I think, the, maybe the next stage up. Um, I don't expect this, I don't expect it to pass the full Congress. It'll be more of a messaging bill, um, at least, before the elections. So there's not gonna be time in the summer and fall with the elections taking place. Um, there's, okay, maybe there will be more time now that it looks likely that the, um, the, 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 
the parties may not get together for for party conventions um, as part of the presidential campaign, but but still, I'm not sure that results in more um, more members of Congress gathering together in a room to do work. Um, but beyond the elections, uh, these bills could have a lot of impact over what happens for the remainder of the fiscal year, if not the calendar year. Uh, finally. Surface transportation reauthorization, we've been working very hard on it. Like I said, we were expecting the draft bill to be released on April. Um, so this is, it's, it's small in the, in the scope of what's happening to our country and the world, but it's kind of, it's a blow for uh, this association and the work we put into it um, because it seems like the consensus wisdom is this is dead for the rest of the year until after the elections. Now, leaders in the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and the Senate Commerce Committee are both positioning the reauthorization as a natural um, infrastructure focused recovery uh, act. Um, and so they're definitely, you know, this is a lot of this is messaging. A lot of this is is trying to convince people that this is so that they so that they can, um, you know, get more attention, get more resources from the leadership. But what they're saying is right, and if we wanted to get good uh, good value for money, um, a multi year reauthorization would be the way to do it. Um, which brings me to my final slide which is our five-year updated um, surface transportation reauthorization uh, proposal, which ends up averaging to about 11 billion a year. Um, this, if we ever, if we got that, this is in line with the House Democrats have proposed in terms of top line funding. This should be something that would really transform the way people travel around the US. Um, and I think, it's a, at least worth referencing in your messages to um, to your members uh, of Congress and their and their employees, uh, their transportation staffers, because we don't want to get uh, we're going to be very focused on on the next six months and the twelve months, uh, the six months beyond that. But you know we can't get so ton tunnel vision. Uh, we can't get so focused in on the tunnel vision that that we forget the big picture here. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to a Q and A. Uh, I see we have eight messages. I don't know, Joe. Do you want to read some of these off? If there are, um, do you want to read some of these off if they are questions? Yeah, there's, there's a, a couple questions in the chat, and before I unmute um, everybody, we'll keep kind of try to get an order uh, going here. But um, the couple questions up top from uh, Mark out in Kansas. Um, from the first, uh, the first slide you had with the actual with our, our table for the the ask and the appropriations. Uh, he asked, "How was the total funding request derived or uh, or limited? Why not ask for more?" And uh, is the dollar amount for the capital uh, development adequate for near-term projects? So, um, I the first one is why not more? Let me go back to the, uh, the funding page here. Um, we are on the second year of a two-year budget agreement, and so that set the caps for FY20 and FY21. Um, it slowly increases, and so what we kind of did with with the FY21 is tried not to get so crazy with. Uh, listen, the passenger rail network could soak up three, four times as much this money, um, relatively easy, easily. Well, not not relatively easily. We could do with double this much money. Um, and, and not have to sweat too much about uh, thinking how to spend it. The problem is appropriators are going to look at us and say, you know, we don't have uh, more than 10% of what we we had last year and housing and housing who we are paired with, um, the cost of that have increased. And so um, we do 
try to think about um, being credible within a certain sense, uh, because if appropriators think we're just going to ask um, for something they know we can't deliver, they're going to be less likely to come to us and ask questions um, when they have the hard decisions to make. Um, now, we did, based on intelligence we heard um, from Hill members, we think there's an appetite for much more uh, federal state partnership um, state of good repair grants. And so that is why we more than doubled that um, and, and dramatically increased it by 300 million. Uh, but the rest of it, we tried to step it up so that it would be noticeable, but not so much that it would make appropriators kind of walk away in disgust. Uh, we did not kind of con con confine ourselves, or sorry, constrain ourselves that way uh, during the surface transportation authorization, because at that point we are not dealing with budget control act and we will um, be thinking about revenue as well and so we can talk about increasing revenue as well as increasing spending in terms of the quarter development program um, and its sufficiency uh, let me make sure i got the question in front of me i i think amtrak is thinking about this as a um a pilot uh, year a pilot project um, $300 million uh, could could launch, could definitely launch a, um, you know, under 400 mile corridor in, I think they're targeting the South. I, I think I, they haven't really let us, you know, we've been butting heads a little bit over um, uh, a lot of uh, decisions they've made at management level. So, so uh, we, we still have a, a free flow of communication, but but they are guarded about some things. I don't know exactly where they would go with this. I just know that the only thing publicly uh, that has happened um, in terms of, of, of them talking about new service in a public venue is Nashville uh, to Chicago um, with the option to further extend down to Atlanta. And I think 300 million would be sufficient to get the work started on that kind of project. Um, but they are envisioning this as a multi-billion dollar program eventually. That answers your question. Um, anything else, Joe? Yeah, uh, so Clifford asked, uh, is there anything we can, should do about gig corridors being forced to take whatever Amtrak's latest good idea on change fees is? Um, yeah, I, on change fees, uh, are we talking about, um, for the tickets, uh, the ticketing policy? Yes, that's my understanding. Yes. Yeah, Amtrak ticketing policy. Well, so we, um, worked with, uh, Representative Lamb and um, Representative Lamb and uh, Senator Blumenthal on some of the arbitration uh, issues with the ticketing policy. Um, legislation was introduced. I fully expect it to pass. I'm not sure what the vehicle will be now. Um, it might be appropriations. It might be. It might have to be a CR. Uh, in terms of the refund policy, we were able to work with uh, Senator Warren um, uh, from Massachusetts, um, who wrote a letter and demanded um, some some answers about the impact. Um, so I think that's the venue we're pursuing currently. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of the steam was taken um, out of this effort because uh, Amtrak, I think within a week of us issuing a response publicly um, and, and uh, coordinating with Warren, uh, ended up um, kind of rolling back that policy just in response to coronavirus. So I, I suppose since they brought on another airline guy um, in Flynn, 
we would expect it to be um, put back into place once everyone starts moving freely. And so that might be something, it, it, it's a good point. We are working with war on it. And the question is, there were a bunch of labor protections um, put into place uh, along with the phase three money that is currently being debated. Um, and so going forward, uh, I think there's uh, really good opportunities to, as we increase the amount of money Amtrak is receiving from the government, um, to help them weather the coronavirus uh, emergency, we'll have more leverage to put greater uh, oversight and restrictions on how they use that money. Um, and that's going to be one of those things that I think we'll have um, a pretty good coalition and a pretty good chance of addressing. All right. Um, anything else? All right. Another, another question. Another question in the chat. Um, can you tell us more about the Brain app and how it fits into the rest of all this? The uh, the Brain Train Act. Um, that was a bill that has been pulled uh, for the time being, and was we developed it with Senator um, Markey who is facing his own primary uh, from uh, Joe Kennedy, currently Rep Representative Kennedy. Um, they were going to drop it. Um, then everything went to hell. Uh, they pulled it because they knew no, they weren't going to get any press on it. They also knew probably their vehicle for getting it passed, the service transportation reauthorization. Um, the window might have closed for the year. Um, and the reason, so that's five billion a year um, over five years. And if we could get that introduced, um, I think we would propose that that replace the Chrissy program, um, given the fact that the Chrissy program has just been hijacked by shortline railroads. Um, and th that one uh, really kind of talks about incremental upgrades to existing passenger rail specific corridors. And it, um, it, it, compa it contrasts with what we've seen coming out of Representative Costa's office from California, which, where he specifically um, takes the federal high-speed rail program, gives it $8 billion a year over five years, um, but does restrict investments to the federally designated high-speed rail corridors. And we are working with that office too, because we do want to expand it beyond um, those, those corridors to make sure the entire network can benefit. Um, but it's just about contrasting um, visions for, for how you want that money um, to be spent. I know with Markey, again, this is kind of, Discretion, please, because this hasn't been released to the public yet. But um, they they wanted a program that would be able to um, benefit the Western Massachusetts Rail Corridor, um, and so they're they're not going to be getting the you know 180 mile trains um, out west um, from Boston. Um, but they do think there's a there's a, a big untapped market there. Um, so that's that's kind of the difference. I will keep everyone up to date, but that may not get um, drops this year, but we'll, we're, we're still keeping communications open and if things calm down a little bit, we might see it reintroduced depending again on how the Massachusetts primary goes. Um, next question, Joe. Yeah, another question. Uh, so, uh, from our chairman, Peter Cody, uh, want to know if you can talk about the mic amendment, uh, on FMB and how it might be eliminated. Right, so that's one of the pieces of legislation. Um, right now, we think we can get it directly with the committee staff, so we don't have the bill number for it. Um, but we just very, we have draft legislation, we've submitted it, and it just straight up eliminates the provision. It's not like a very complicated legislative fix. Um, we know we have a, a very, if we don't get the committee, um to work with us we have sent uh sorry uh, congressman cohen from tennessee who is fired up and ready to go we've submitted to them 
they kind of want more elaborate language just in terms of the messaging um, because they want to be able to explain to people who don't necessarily um, ride outside of the Northeast corridor um, to understand when they read the bill why it's important for sustainable um, service levels to offer uh, hot food on a train and why you can't just get away with clip bars and um, and and kind of the 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 Seven Eleven food that you often see on like the Northeast corridor, um, which again is insufficient if you're going to be on the train for more than uh, 24 hours. So that's where we're at. I, I think we have a pretty good um, chance of getting passed. We've heard from committee staff that Amtrak is telling them that introducing uh, introducing the the kind of the new service model has actually lost them more money than they were losing with um, even just on the like not even indirect costs from from lost ridership but direct costs and so I think we're we're definitely um, making making good progress on that. Thanks for the question, Peter. Uh, last question in the chat. Um, any news on the Atlanta to Charlotte project pitched this fall by uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia DOT sponsored researchers? Um, so any chance of searching for preferred corridor alternative? Um, no. I, I There was a update um, that Jim went, well, he we were both actually scheduled to go to the uh, both the Midwest and the Southeast um, FRA um, corridor study group. Um, and this one was gonna be, I believe in Charlotte, um, but it was canceled because of coronavirus. So Jim um, went to the, um, Jim went to the, uh, the webinar, the online briefing that was kind of just like this. Um, I was not able to attend because I was, this was right when the coronavirus um, package was being drafted. So I was uh, on the Hill. Um, so I can perhaps get an update from him. Maybe we'll have a chance to talk about it on Monday when we're going to have our, um, we're going to have our, our kind of, our traditional briefing before the day on the hill. Um, and again, I'm hoping that can be a conversation as much as me just talking to you guys. It's gonna be harder because we're gonna be on the phone. It's gonna be a webinar. Um, so I'm not sure how we'll be able to moderate that effectively. I think we're gonna have, some, have to have some discipline, but we, I'll, I'll try to get Jim to talk about that a little bit um, this coming Monday. Anything else? All right. Uh... Clint Richmond, uh, Clint uh, Richmond uh, here in Massachusetts. Uh, this, you mentioned Gulf Coast and the restoration grants, uh, and Clint wanted to know. I thought there was already money for Gulf Coast there. Um, there's anyway, fifty million dollars is nothing, and certainly wouldn't cover the Gulf Coast, as you said. The three hundred million dollars might cover on um, corridors. Um, so, it was, is, is the Gulf Coast restoration in that in the restoration grants um, that we're asking for? Well, so I mean, I Gulf Coast doesn't have all the money they need. Um, they they cleared a very important uh, hurdle to get, um, and and that's from the Mobile City Council to um, move ahead with local funding for um, some of the the restoration projects. But they could use more money um, in terms of working with CSX and making improvements to the corridor. There is always, of course extending it beyond Mobile um, into Florida. The reason this program has survived is it, is it is it has kind of fallen under the wing of Senator Wicker, who's currently the chairman of um, Senate Commerce, and he is very uh, cordial and collegiate with um, Senator Shelby, who heads up the Senate Appropriations staff. Uh, I don't know like 50 million is kind of a kind of an in-between 
um, number. I d honestly, I don't expect us to get the 50 million. This is just us kind of talking about um, setting a signpost down and saying, this is a worthwhile program um, and we do need to plus it up. Um, and outside of a uh, dramatically dramatic increase in the funding and also a commitment to fund it over five years, um, we won't get kind of the state involvement we need to make sure um, that they are offering the local matches. $50 million isn't enough um, by itself, but 50, even 50 million a year over 10 years um, would be enough to, to get interest in enhancing corridors. Um, and that might be something that, you know, we could use to uh, get the, get their, get the, uh, sorry, the, the sunset to daily uh, or the, the cardinal to daily. So those are the kinds of things we're looking at. All right, so there's no more uh, questions in the chat. Uh, Malcolm had a quick question, but Peter got, uh, got answered to him, and I was going to answer it myself as well. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and unmute everybody. Uh, if there's any other questions directly to Sean, please, uh, if you are not asking questions, please keep yourself on mute um, so we don't have sort of chaos rolling here. Um, so. Sean, this is Steve Strauss. Is there any house there for the still? I'm sorry, what? Is there, is there a corresponding house bill for the Durbanville S2922? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. And there's also no Republicans, and that is going to be the bigger. Uh, we need some Republican geo, uh, some, sorry, some Republican Senate members to, um, to get on board with that. We, 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 we get a house, um, uh, we were actually going to work with Lipinski on it, but we'll see if that happens. Um, we get a, a, a house version fairly easily, um, but I don't, I'm a little curious to know who's going to step up in the, um, in the GOP and, and kind of help us with this, because that's going to be, uh, you know, in the Senate, the, the biggest obstacle. Uh, Sean, this is Malcolm. Yeah. Following up on that, is there uh, which of those bills or proposals, if any, have have or are likely to get Republican support? Let me go back to the list. All right. You know, I think. Um, in training national network service, uh, given the fact that it's based on language that ha received a 90, 94 to four vote in the Senate. Um, I don't think we'll have opposition better to perform. Um, invest in the American Rules Act uh, is something that, it, because it's RIF and it will also help uh, short line railroads. I, I believe the Short Line Railroad Association will work with us. Um, the Grade Crossing Safety Act is also going to um, be a bipartisan winner, and I would think that would be it. The rest of it, we would hope to. Um, you know, be part of a larger house. It, it, you know, as long as the Dems have the House um, and the GOP have the Senate, it's there's going to be kind of there can be a question of you know what what don't they impose strongly um, as well as what do they support uh, in terms of the GOP? Anything else? Yeah, this is Royce on the phone. Are you taking questions? Yeah, Royce. Uh, go ahead. Shoot. Um, I don't think anybody, well, I don't have any idea, but 
how are we going to talk to the congressional offices? They're not going to have go to meeting software. And I was thinking of using something like a webinar, but you're looking at, uh, you were talking from different information than I had on, on the link that you provided. So I don't uh, know. I mean, what, what are you planning to do on that? I, I think you should call them. Um, I think you should kind of walk, you should keep it simple. I mean, there's Zoom, unless you're like really comfortable with webinar software, I wouldn't like have that be your first time hosting the webinar. Um, if you do have a, if you are comfortable, Zoom is right now, their stock is shooting through the roof, it's free service. Um, if you're not, then you should, um, talk them through, hit the, uh, get some, work through the bullet points, which we will um, shortly be coming up with just like, you know, Joe's going to do this for the 28,000 members we have, where it will be kind of simplified talking points. The council level, you know, there's a little bit higher degree of sophistication there. Um, but we will um, be sending people talking points. Um, as part of a kind of legislative landing page. Um, and I would just call them, just kind of read through, um, hit, hit the points that we outlined in terms of FY 2021 funding. Thank you for coronavirus support uh, for Amtrak and Transit. Here's a resource for you. Uh, and then here's what we're thinking about coming year ahead, but also if you're interested in service reauthorization proposals we have those as well and then of course you want to make sure to talk about your low your congressional district issues or your state issues if you're talking to senators uh, and then make sure to get their email address and send them all those materials um, in person and then that way you have a good way to follow up with them and if anyone can't by the way, this is thanks you for remind, reminding me, Royce. But if anyone can, is having trouble getting through to offices, and I know a lot of people are working from home, and so there's been some issues with the phone systems, um, even on Capitol Hill. Uh, I can get email addresses relatively easy. Um, uh, so just reach out to me directly, and I can get the entire state or um, uh, even a region, if you're you're going to be aggressive on that end, um, so that can kind of help circumnavigate the uh, the trouble of going through the call the switchboards. Thanks, Sean. For if they have Sean, if they have the name, you could give them the generic. It's first name, last name at mail.house.gov, right? Yep, yep. It's um. <laughs> For house, uh, first name oh, dot last name at mail.house.gov. For Senate, it's first name underscore last name at senators last name dot senate dot gov. Thank you, Malcolm. Yes. Yeah. I have a I autofill at this point with most of my contacts, so I don't have to think about it as much. Um cool. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, but, no, sorry, sorry. Sorry. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Who wants to go first? Go on, you can. Okay. okay. Uh, a quick question. Considering how up in the air our country is right now, do you want to do you want to limit us to next week to make these calls to our congressional offices, or try to get them all done during this general time period? That's an excellent question. That is an excellent question. And I actually should have I've been meaning to clarify this. It, it this does not need to happen on the 31st. We're, we've been kind of sticking to that format, just be out of tradition in the sense of kind of soldiering on, I guess. But if, if the 31st doesn't work for you personally, or you're having trouble finding the time um, with, with your a transportation staff or in a particular office, flexibility is, is key. And so I would think um, 
once this phase three bill passes, which could happen tonight, could happen tomorrow, um, we're going to have probably a two week kind of respite where any at any point in that time, reaching out to your member and letting them know, here's what we're looking at in terms of aid packages. Here's what we're looking at in terms of FY 2021. And, you know, please let me know um, uh, if there's anything that can help you. That's going to be very difficult. So, um, an extended window of, of contact is completely acceptable. Um, please do even if it's if, if it doesn't happen on next tuesday let me know that the meeting happens so we can include it in our uh, tracking metrics we will thank you thank you i appreciate that question it was a good one uh there was someone else after him um another question please uh, uh, hi uh, this, this yeah, is uh, there was uh, a question that came in um Uh, Joe, why don't you wait and let the uh, the council member ask us? Uh, who who was talking before Joe? Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to step on his toes. Uh, my name is Frank Buzzetlowski from Pennsylvania. Uh, this is my first rodeo, so uh, pardon the question here. But uh, uh, do do you have uh, some PDF documents that um, I could email to some of the congressional offices that we've already scheduled? our calls for so they have something to review ahead of time i i have all of your information by link and so forth but i was wondering if you had uh, some pdf documents that have proved effective yeah frank i will uh send you what we have of course you can um download them as pdfs from the uh from the website but i you know i we, we've been talking through email so frank i'll just take care of you um and everybody yeah okay thank you I'll, okay will do thank you all right and now joe uh if you could yeah yeah so now the question came in uh, arthur Poole had asked uh, in the chat um how can amtrak or congress determine a competitive rate for passenger train track space and infrastructure improvements that is the question of the hour. Um, we have talked about a shared use uh, advisory corridor committee, shared use corridor advisory committee, rather. I apologize. Um, we have kind of looked, we've settled on Amtrak took our input ran it through their uh, government affairs staff, excuse me, and included included a very similar proposal um, in their ledge grant. Um, so process improvements for host railroad access for additional trains and routes. Um, there's not an e easy answer here, uh, unfortunately, but what we're trying to do, and this unfortunately will have to happen in the surf trans, um, because it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be kind of a a multi-year committee process, but it's it's, you know, forcing the host railroads to come to the table um, and and determine and use the STB um, as a kind of mediator for standardizing access agreements. Because right now, obviously. It, there's very little incentive for host railroads um, to come to the table. Uh, they'd rather just, they'd rather turn away money if it means they get to be, you know, completely unencumbered um, with any sort of oversight or any sort of agreement. And the fact that they're battling with Amtrak over OTP certainly doesn't help, um, you know, expand their willingness to to engage with us. And so that's why we see you know, I, I'm sure you've all heard Jim talk about, or any of us talk about the $2 billion quote for one train a day on the Gulf Coast that CSX kind of put forward. And that was clearly not a serious quote. It was just um, meant to scare the governments away um, from pursuing the train at all. So that's the best we've come up with so far. Um, 
that's the most we will have appetite for in terms of um, the Senate uh, forcing access is, is just creating a body um, to, to publicly kind of come up with some proposals and using the STB as a uh, mediator for standardizing access. Um, and, and I encourage everyone to go look at that um, section, both in our surface transportation proposal, but also Amtrak's, um, which I linked to in the FY 2021 doc. Thanks, Art. That was a good question. Uh, George, I see George. Is there any daylight or disagreement between RPA and Amtrak on any of the issues we have discussed? Yes. Yes. Um, Let's see, where do I start? Go back to a pointer here, sorry. So, um, they obviously, um, they don't like what we've done with the restoration enhancement grants. Uh, they don't think it's a worthwhile um, pot of money. Um, we're going to move ahead with it regardless. Um, I believe, um, hold on, sorry. They, I don't think they really agree with us on the equipment in terms of flexibility um, and, and the way that would be integrated um, in terms of using old equipment. Uh, a lot here. Um, the the Lamb Blumenthal bill um, is is kind of a, a it's a direct fight uh, with them. They the Warren Coles Grade Crossing Safety Act. They didn't agree with how that was structured, but we felt it was good. It was better to take care of our allies on the Senate with Markey. Um, I think in the Invest in American Railroads Act, they thought you know that's one of those things where I they're okay with it generally, but they'd rather the money go to them. Um, HR 6101, that's what I was talking about with the Blumenthal Lamb. And then I think both the High Speed Rail Quarter Development Act and the Brain Train Act, which eventually we hope to um, to launch, it's again, they just would rather have the money flow through them. Um, and we're going to, until we get what we want from them in terms of oversight, um, uh, enshrined in, in um in law, I'm not sure that we're we're willing to just sign a blank check um, worth more than you know. 300 million is fine, and I again I think there's trade-offs to to giving Amtrak money um, to to launch services. The first the benefits are they're they're the best at it in the U.S. There's no real competition um, outside of perhaps. Virgin Trains USA. Um, although again, that's they they really didn't launch that project. It was it was really more um, Fortress and and the Florida East Coast. And so we'll see if they're they're able to replicate that on a railroad where they don't own all the uh, rights of way. Um, and, and of course, the speed of the issue, uh, the speed of project implementation, is good. But uh, again, given the fact that um, Richard Anderson used his kind of all employees call to talk about, if we don't get money um, from Congress, you know, the, the long distance railroad, long distance routes are gonna have to go, which is a statement of fact, and, and I, we can't disagree with, with it, but he then followed it up with, and even if we do get the money, I kind of think that they should go at some point anyway. Um, the fact that on his way out the door as a lame duck CEO, he would still kind of take a tilt at that windmill, even after he's been brushed back so many times, um, kind of highlights the danger, uh, cause we don't really know that much about Flynn's theory of railroading and, you know, he's worked for CSX, so he's not a neophyte, but, um, in terms of the, the passenger side of the account. There's still a lot there we need to calculate, and I'm not sure we want to leave it up to the personality of whoever happens to be appointed as CEO of Amtrak. Um, so we will work with Amtrak, uh, sorry, Congress, to make sure um, that there are 
guide rails on any sort of investment they get. Finally, of course, there's the um, Amtrak transparency and oversight um, bullet point here. We're still developing that. Um, we're hoping to get it through metrics and standards process um, from FRI. I emailed you that separately, George, in terms of uh, the data they report out already um, to kind of, because we're going to need to do a comment on the FRA and BRM and uh, I'm going to want your your help with that. So that's that's kind of a summary, I think, of the main points of disagreement that I'm covering here. Um, if we went into the surf trans uh, document, then we would see a lot more. But in terms of FI 2021, um, those are those are the main points of disagreement. Was that helpful? Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. All right, and we can, uh, if anyone has any questions on that um, or anything else, you guys all know my number. Um, you all have my email, so we can we can talk about this more. We will have this conversation again, um, a, a different version of this conversation on Monday. Um, I would love some feedback on only Barry. Um, Barry Green responded to my question. Would it be better to break it up into east and west briefings um, so that we have more room for people to to talk, to ask questions, to, you know, I want you guys not just bouncing ideas off me, but bouncing off ideas off each other. Um, unfortunately, we're not gonna be all in the same room and we're gonna lose a lot of the value of, of, of that, I'm hoping that we will be able to have a lot of the longer term questions and and conversations about strategy we're going to reschedule in june um but in terms of the day on the hill um would you would would you guys rather have a single unified conversation but it means everyone gets less time to kind of express themselves or is it better to break it up by east and west so that it can be more of a conversation. Um, so it, you don't need to answer now, just email me. I, I gotta make a decision on that pretty quickly here. Um, but um, just email me, I'll try to do a straw poll. It's, it's your guys' meeting, so um, I'll, I'll just, low, low, low voter turnout, I'm sure we'll, um, we'll end up, you know, making your vote count more so just let me know and i'll count up the votes and we'll go that way um finally uh yeah just i want again want to just reiterate the um the open door policy you guys know my email send me any questions you have um my my uh phone number is on my signature email signature so uh, you know i'm gonna be trying to prepare for next week's meeting. Um, but uh, but yeah, reach out to me with any questions you have, um, anything that you think the group could benefit from, and we'll, uh, we'll try to make sure uh, that it's implemented and sent out to everyone. Sean, could I ask just one last question before you go? Uh, rather than drown, uh, our staffers in everything would it be better uh to break this up into a couple of different tranches over uh, a week or two or is that going to lose some of the punch for example if reauthorization is down the road maybe put that in a second tranche versus the more immediate uh, coronavirus blah blah uh and the fy 2022 uh, appropriation yeah, I, I, I'm gonna. There's a lot here. Yeah, yeah. I, re we should not be talking about reauthorization other than to say that we have a plan and here it is. Um, when you have a chance, look at it. Um, it's going to be coronavirus immediate needs. Thank you. Here are the projects in my district that could use more money if we're trying to stimulate our economy. And then FY 2021, here are the top line levels. So I, I would. He, I would restrict the conversation to those two things and then use the long tail um, 
and, and we'll get into this more on Monday in terms of strategy. Um, but you know, it's gonna, you're gonna definitely want to lead with coronavirus and then ask questions like what, what are you concerned about in the current chaotic environment? Um, how can we help you? And then, you know, as you are, if they have questions about appropriations, if they have questions about reauthorization, direct them to those resources. Um, but definitely um, prioritize uh, the financial aid needed to keep Amtrak liquid, needed to keep uh, transit agencies liquid um, in, in, in dealing with the shocking loss of ridership and revenue. Um, but that, no, excellent point. And and um, again, when I send out the the resources for the day on the hill this week, um, I hope to make that more explicit. But I'm I'm glad you asked. Thanks, Sean. Okay, it is a uh, 7:15, so which means we've been here for more than an hour. Um, any other questions you guys have? Email them to me. Um, and I will try to answer them and send them out as a QA and a uh, to the entire group. And we will send this uh, recording uh, once Joe has managed to upload it um, to the rest of the council. Thank you so much for taking time out of your night. I know everyone's got a lot on their minds. There's a lot of people worried about loved ones. Um, so I, I, I really am appreciative, appreciative of you taking the time and mental energy to be here. Um, and and thank you for supporting this this event. I know it's not what any of us were planning, but it, I appreciate your flexibility in, in helping us deal with it. John, I think we all appreciate you and Joe for taking your time uh, tonight uh, to brief us. I appreciate it very much, and thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joe, especially for thank you, Joe. Being... And uh, I'm going to close it out now. Good thank night, you, everyone. All. Night. Good 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 night.